Assalamu alaikum and hello everybody. My name is Rosiana. So today I am going to be presenting to all of you about stress in simple and complex words. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, first things first, before we decide to place the stress within a certain word, what are the conditions or factors that we need to consider before doing that? Well, firstly, we must look at the morphological structure of the word, whether it is a simple word, a complex or a compound word. Secondly, we must consider the grammatical category of the word because stress placements can differ from a noun, a verb, adjectives and adverbs, although they share the same word. And then we have to look at the number of word syllables because whether it is a single syllable word, a two syllable word or three syllable word, Lastly, we must also consider the phonological structure of syllables. So in this presentation, I am going to focus on simple and complex words as well as the number of syllables. Okay, so let's get right into it. Well, first and foremost, stress in simple words. So simple words here basically refer to the root word or stem. So I'll break it down into three parts which is single syllable, two syllable, and three syllable. So let's take a look at each number of syllables, shall we? Okay, since, since single syllable words only have one syllable, so it would be uttered with primary stress, except for function words like articles and propositions, of course. So for example here, the word write, plant, push, okay? Now for two syllable words, there can only be one syllable that is stressed. So it's impossible to stress on both syllables because it would not make much sense, especially in English. So we're going to go by each grammatical category of words starting with verbs. So first of all, if the final or second syllable is weak, then the first syllable will be stressed. For example, the word enter, meddle, purchase. Okay? Secondly, when the final syllable has the O sound, it will automatically be unstressed. Therefore, the first syllable would be stressed. For example, borrow, follow. It cannot be borrow, follow. It doesn't make sense, right? Okay. But what if both first and second syllables are strong? Well, then the second syllable will be stressed. For example, here the word maintain, apply, attract. All right. Okay. Now let's look at nouns. So for two syllable nouns, usually we stress on the first syllable. For example, the word coffee, penny. So what if the first syllable is weak? Then we stress on the second syllable, like a like a swap, you know? For example, the word machine, design. All right. Okay, for adjectives, the rule is basically the same as verbs, but there are uh, ex exceptions for the words honest and perfect because both of these words end with strong syllables but are stressed on the first syllable like honest perfect got it all right and finally for ad for adverbs they are pretty much the same case as verbs and adjectives all right Okay, moving on to the next one three syllable words same thing here we will start off with verbs Alright, first off, the final or third syllable will be uttered with primary stress if it is strong. For example, the word entertain, resurrect. Got it? Alright, however, what if the last syllable is not strong? Then the stress will fall onto the preceding syllable only if it is strong, like surrender, abandon. Now, if both third and second syllables are weak, what do we do? Well, we place the stress onto the first syllable. Recognize. Consider. So the whole process here is like taking a step back to each syllable, seeing if the previous syllable is strong or not. Got it? Great. Now, for nouns, in general, the first, the first syllable will always be stressed unless it is weak. For example, here the word emperor, custody. But what if the first syllable is weak? Well, we stress on the next syllable, which is the second syllable. Disaster, potato. Now, if the final syllable or the third syllable in a three-syllable word is strong, we shall put this whole stress onto it, right? 
Well, wrong. That's not the case. This one is a little special. If the final syllable in a three-syllable noun is strong, it will receive a secondary stress instead of primary or main stress because the first syllable will be stressed. Like intellectual, alkali. All right, are we all good so far? Great, because we're moving on to the, to the second part of the presentation, which is stress in complex words. Now, complex words is when a word had a word has an added suffix or prefix. So that's what we're going to look at right now, especially suffixes. Now, so under word stress and suffixes, we have three aspects, and the first one is stress shifting suffix. It is when the suffix in the stem give a shifting effect on the stress. So an example here is the suffix is, outreach and outrageous. So can you hear the difference? I repeat for you, yeah? Outreach, outrageous. Well, the root word, in the root word, the stress is placed on the first syllable, but after the suffix was added, the stress automatically shifted to the second syllable. Outreach and outrageous. Same goes to the other examples here, photo, photography, and so on. Now, is it possible that a suffix can give no effect on the stress placements at all? Yes, it is possible, and it is called the stress-neutral suffixes so for example here is the suffix able perish and perishable no difference right same goes to the other examples here now thirdly the third stress in suffix is called stress attracting suffixes and it is the primary stress it is when the primary stress is placed on the suffix itself like the suffix e in employee absentee so the suffix ear in engineer Puppeteer, and the list goes on. All right. Now, prefixes, on the other hand, follows the same rule as polysyllabic words without prefixes because unlike suffixes, we cannot really predict the stress placement for each prefix. All right? Okay, so, yay, we have come to the end. That would be all for me. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Bye.